Welcome to Studio X, and in this video you will be learning how to rotoscope in After Effects. Rotoscoping is one of the key techniques in visual effects, and a lot of studios usually look for rotoscopers, so that's a great thing to add to your resume as well as a demo reel. So, let's get started. I already have the clip I will be using added and trimmed in my composition, so let's take a look at what you will be working with. So this is a shot from a film I made. For the sake of this tutorial, I will just be cutting out his left shoulder and arm and maybe a little bit of his body for the tutorial to show you how it works. So to start rotoscoping, all you need to do is go up to the pen tool and you can select it. And you can see I have Roto Bezier checked on and I will show you the differences right now. So with Roto Bezier turned on, you don't make any curves yourself. You just click and you can see it automatically creates the curves for you. That is the way I like to rotoscope. That is the way that programs like Silhouette as well as Mocha work, which are great tools for rotoscoping. So you can see, I'm just gonna finish this off to show you the other tool. So you can see it automatically created the curves for you. So if you don't have Roto Bezier checked off and you start placing in masks, you can see that it's not making curves. And in order to make a curve, you're gonna click and drag to then start making the curves. So you can see the way that this option works, but I find it a bad choice for rotoscoping because if your character or the element, like the arm, moves a lot, especially with all these different folds and stuff, you will have to go and rotate each element individually, which could introduce edges moving around in your mask, which looks really, really bad, especially if you're trying to do something like replace the background or add like a fire in the back where it's a really high contrast between the edges. So you'll be able to really, really see that if you're using this kind of technique for the mask. So I'm going to delete the mask. We're gonna start rotoscoping with Roto Bezier turned on. The best way to rotoscope is to do each element individually. So for this clip, I would break down the forearm, then the arm, then the elements in the shoulder, and then the little details like this zipper piece here, um, and that should be good. So let's go ahead and I will do one frame of the forearm so you can see how that looks and then we'll go ahead and cut it out for the entire length of the clip. So you can see that I'm just clicking around. I don't do any dragging because I have the Roto Bezier turned on and it's doing a pretty good job adding the curves. And the key with rotoscoping is the less points you can add to your curve, the better. That way you're not adding, you know, any unnecessary points like this that you would have to move later. So if if you could use less points, that's the best way to go. So there we go, we've got the arm cut out. So I will, I will change the mask to be none, so we can see our points, and we are going to drop down the little menu. And if you don't see any of these mask options, you can hit MM on your keyboard, and it will pull up the mask options. So let's keyframe the path by clicking the little stopwatch here. 
and let's move forward in time. This looks pretty good. And I will select all of my points here by hitting Command A. And you'll see they will all turn into black squares. And I can just take and drag it. It's always best to move points in groups. Once again, to not introduce weird edges that would be jumping around if you're moving each point individually. And then I kind of choose big areas when I can move them. And you can see they kind of basically align themselves. Perfect. So if you run it back and forth, you can see that it looks pretty good. There's, it's maybe off by a frame here. So I'm just gonna nudge it over with the arrow keys on my keyboard. There we go, looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go to the last frame before he moves his, his arm. And I'm just gonna try to align it there and then work backwards basically. And obviously the more time you spend on rotoscoping, the better you'll get an output. So don't just rush trying to cut out with a really terrible looking mask. So this is really where time is important. So you should take your time and try to really make each point be perfect. So a really good technique for rotating elements is I will align it down to the bottom because that's where I'm gonna be rotating it. And if you double click, you can see it gives you a menu. This is the anchor point where all of the rotation and sizing happens. So I will take it and move it to the corner of the elbow. And then I can just rotate this down and you can see it almost aligns. And I'm gonna actually take the scaling and hold shift and just stretch it up slightly. And you can see that really helps align the bottom here. So now the bottom is done, I will double click to basically save those elements. And then I will just fix up the other little issues that you're having here. So let's take a look at our cutout. So what we're going to do is go to mask and choose add. And now we can hit play and then you can see if it's working well. So for this cutout, you can see there's some jumping around in the top, which is fine because the idea is that I would cut out the top part of the arm as well so that they're connected together. And now let's add some motion blur. So you can hit enable motion blur and then choose it from here. And you can see, you can probably barely see it, but it's smoothing those edges slightly. So just for the tutorial, let's make his arm black and white. And what I would do is I would also feather the edges slightly. Probably no more than five pixels. So you can see that sticks really, really well. This would be a really fun way to make, let's say one character in black and white while everybody else is in color or the opposite, you know, where you have a one character in color and the rest of the scene is in black and white. 
there's a lot of uses for rotoscoping, you, whether it's for replacing things in the background or adding things in the background, changing colors, doing different effects. So you use it all of the time. So that's the perfect skill to learn when you want to get into the visual effects industry. When anyone is hiring or getting interns or they need freelancers on a project, rotoscoping is usually the first thing people pick because it's the most time consuming task and it's pretty simple skill to learn. And if you perfect it really well, you can just use it on your, on your demo reel. You can use it on your demo reel and there's definitely going to be some visual effect company that is looking for rotoscopers. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully you learned some new techniques and how to utilize them in After Effects. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to this channel and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or you want to tell me which tutorials you want to learn next, feel free to write it down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.